Welcome to this CAP 437 Awareness Training Program. This program has been designed to provide all offshore personnel involved with helicopter operations with the required knowledge of the relevant information presented in CAP 437, 8th edition. This training program consists of five modules and will be presented in two parts. Part A, Module 1, Introduction. Module 2, Helicopter Performance Considerations. Module 3, Helicopter Landing Areas. Part B, Module 4, Visual Aids. Module 5, Helidic Rescue and Firefighting Facilities. CAP 437 Awareness Training Program, Part A. This is Module 1, Introduction. On completion of this module, participants will be able to understand the various changes that have occurred in the design and development of helicopter offshore landing areas since 1981, describe the use of CAP 437 as an industry best practice publication that provides the criteria for assessing the standards of offshore helicopter landing areas globally. List the landing areas that are covered by CAP 437 and outline the actions taken when offshore helidecks do not meet the criteria in CAP 437. Standards for the design and construction of installations, both fixed and mobile, have been in place as early as 1970. Initial consultation between the UK CAA and the British Helicopter Advisory Board was valuable in releasing the first CAP 437 edition in 1981. This document went through a further six amendments between 1983 and 2013 to further improve the information presented and to increase safety margins. The latest CAP 437 8th edition was released in December 2016 and will be used as the main reference during this program which is required to complete the final assessment, please download this document to have readily available as a reference throughout the program. CAP 437 Awareness Training Program, Part B. From any point on the periphery of the D-Circle, there should be an obstacle-free approach and takeoff sector provided, which totally encompasses the landing area and which extends over a sector of at least 210 degrees. Within this sector, obstacle accountability should be considered out to a distance from the periphery of the landing area that will allow for an unobstructed departure path appropriate to the helicopter the helideck is intended to serve. For helicopters operated in performance class 1 or 2, the horizontal extent of this distance from the helideck will be based on the one engine inoperative capability of the helicopter type to be used. In consideration of the above, only the following items essential for safe helideck operations may exceed the height of the landing area, but should not do so by more than 25 centimeters. For new build helidecks completed on or after 10 November 2018, and for refurbishments, the height of essential items around the helideck should not exceed 15 centimeters for any helideck where the D value is greater than 16.01 meters. For helideks where the D value is 16.0 meters or less, the height of essential items around the helideck should not exceed 5 centimeters. Objects whose function requires that they be located on the surface of the helideck, such as landing nets, tie down points, and circle and H lighting systems, see Appendix C, should not exceed a height of 25 millimeters. Such objects should only be present above the surface of the touchdown area, provided they do not cause a hazard to helicopter operations. The bisector of the 210 degree obstacle free sector, OFS, should normally pass through the center of the D circle. The sector may be swung by up to 15 degrees as illustrated in Figure 1. Acceptance of the swung criteria will normally only be applicable to existing installations. 
Note, if the 210 degree OFS is swung, then it would be normal practice to swing the 180 degree falling 5 to 1 gradient by a corresponding amount to indicate and to align with the swung OFS. TAP 437 Awareness Training Program, Part C. This is Module 4, Visual Aids. On completion of this module, participants will be able to fully comprehend all the deck markings used on the helideck and the significance of each marking, and describe the new CAP 437 lighting system used for night operations and how this minimizes the risks of controlled flight into terrain, CFIT. This section will provide the participant with a detailed explanation of each of the helideck markings that are displayed on the helideck and the significance of each of them. The name of the installation should be clearly displayed in such positions on the installation so that it can be readily identified from the air and sea from all normal angles and directions of approach. For identification from the air, the helideck name and the side identification panels are used. The names on both identification markings should be identical, simple, and unique, and facilitate unambiguous communication via radio. The approved radio call sign of the installation should be the same name as painted on the helideck and displayed on the side panel identifier. It is important that crews include the identification of the platform on short final approach to ensure they are landing on the correct installation. CAP 437 Awareness Training Program Part D Module 6 Miscellaneous Operational Standards On completion of this module, participants will be able to 1. Review the miscellaneous operational standards associated with helideck movements and meteorological requirements pertaining to offshore operations. Miscellaneous Operational Standards This section will provide the participant with an overview of helideck movements and motion reporting. It will also cover all the related meteorological information pertaining to offshore operations. Welcome to this CAP 437 Awareness Training Program. This program has been designed to provide all offshore personnel involved with helicopter operations with the required knowledge of the relevant information presented in CAP 437, 8th edition.